Devizes Wharf, Wiltshire, at Easter. The traditional start of the DW since 1948. Canoes and kayaks with a crew of two athletes pass under the start bridge, continue along the Kenneth Naban Canal until it meets the Thames at Reading. Turn right and continue until you reach a set of steps just downstream of Westminster Bridge. 125 miles, non-stop. Once the boats and paddlers have completed the equipment and safety checks, they are free to start when they wish. Crews schedule their start based on how long they think it will take them to paddle the 107 miles to Teddington Lock, in order to arrive within a 4 hour window to meet the outgoing tide. An international event, the race attracts competitors from across the globe and this year it hosted some canoe crews from the USA. Uh, I'm Joe Geisinger, I'm from Austin, Texas. This will be my first DW. I've done uh, 10 water safaris, leather assembles and, and Missouri MR340s. Uh, I'm Kurt Slayton, I'm from Austin, Texas also. I've done no DWs, um, seven water safaris, and seven or so CR100s, small races in Texas, 100 means 100 miles. Um, three touches. Three touches. We're looking forward to uh, giving you a good shot here. They were kind enough to give us a waiver to let us in based on our paddling history. I think it was a huge leap of faith to let us in and we hope to prove that we were worth the uh, effort to brilliant what's your aspiration for the race what time are you hoping to finish in around 20 ish hours yeah. give or take yeah. an hour you checked out the course much uh we've done all of the lower thames river down to windsor and we've done the Crofton box. Yeah, and the tunnel. And the tunnel. Fun. Never paddled in a tunnel before. That was pretty cool. So, in terms of training for this race, what have you done differently to how you trained before, and what have you done specifically for this race? Uh, we trained in much colder weather than we normally do. Because yeah. we normally don't start training in Texas until like end of February, right. March. We did a lot of portaging in downtown Austin with our boat and running on a hike and bike trail with a boat in the dark. People look at us funny. Yeah, you get a lot of funny looks. 
to, uh, yeah, we get a lot of portage training. Uh, we're used to the distance, but not used to the portages. Yeah. Like this. This, I mean, a lot of our races we do, like said, 100 to 260 miles. So the distance is not the problem. It's the, you know, the portaging adds a whole other aspect. And the hail. And the hail. We got hailed on yesterday. Yeah. Outside <laughs> Windsor Castle. Windsor Castle. That was yeah. something different. I never sunshine, hail, rain, sunshine, cloudy. Yeah. It was it, like 15 minutes. Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> that was just totally amazing. Yeah. I've never seen weather change as fast as it did. That sounds like England. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, okay, what's next? But yes. when we pulled out, and it was important when we pulled out and had to change clothes and everything, it was perfect. So it was perfectly sunny yeah. and everything gorgeous. The country treated us well. Yeah. Do you have any plans for the finish in London when you get there? Evidently, they want us to pack up and get out quick. Yeah. So and then we'll yeah. go spend a couple days around visiting around, going to a couple pubs. We did get to see Stonehenge and the Roman Gardens, so we did the touristy thing. Yeah. yeah, we didn't just paddle. which is Canadian Double Canoe with James Prowse today. We've been preparing for the race for about six months, so it feels like a lot has led up to this moment. Um, so we've got a lot of um, excitement. Uh, I've been paddling for about 18 years. I started in flatwater sprint kayak in Washington, D.C. at the Washington Canoe Club, and then picked up uh, marathon canoeing, Canadian-style canoeing, uh, around 2015. I also do outrigger canoeing, James also has a lot of overlap with all three of those paddle sports. Um, so we're definitely a, a good match. We actually met last summer um, doing the GB Outrigger Canoe World Sprints, which were uh, just at Eaton, which we will be paddling by that course today, which is pretty cool. I'm really excited. I think um, James and I are both very experienced paddlers. We've both paddled in challenging conditions before. We actually have done, we did a um, sneaky nighttime paddle when the river was about 150 a few months ago, uh, which was great uh, with the section that we'll be doing at the night time today. Um, so we're very experienced in these conditions. I find it a lot more fun. It's more similar to the fast moving American rivers that we get um, in the States, which is great. I should say I've been living here for four years, so um, not just here for the race. Um, so I'm, I'm excited for the conditions. There is a, a record up for grabs. There's going to be a tight race for it. Um, my good friends Dylan Kirk and Joe Schlimmer are here from the States just to do the race uh, and they're very quick. The record was set by Mike and Rebecca Davis uh, a few years back who are an extremely fast crew. Um, so I don't know if we'll really, uh, if ever there was a time for us to have a shot for it, it's in these conditions.
I'm Dylan Kirk. I live outside of Boston, Massachusetts. Um, I uh, got into flat water marathon canoeing um, when I was in college from uh, 2011 to about 2014. I raced uh, for Paul Smith's college. Um, fell in love with the sport at the Adirondack Canoe Classic as a 90 miler. Um, and uh, got involved with the North American Triple Crown Circuit. Um, done those races and kind of do more. Um, and as far as the DW, yeah, the, the portages are, are concerning. Um, it'll be an adventure, for sure. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Joe Schlimmer. Um, I'm part of a multi-generational uh, canoeing family. My grandfather raced uh, the General Clinton 10 times. My father raced the General Clinton 10 times. I have five brothers and sisters, all who are as good or better racers than I am. Um, we got started in the sport at a very young age, obviously, um, and don't really know any, anything else. Um, I've completed the, the North American Triple Crown Circuit for a decade now, uh, approximately, minus the Classique. I've only done that once. So we've paddled uh, a number of the locks on the Thames, um, six, and then we skipped down past Old Wizard and did two more. Uh, the water's fast. It's real flat though and nice and easy to paddle on. As long as you don't make any mental mistakes mm -hmm. in terms of going headfirst into a weir, it's, you know, not, the water itself is not too challenging, uh, but the, the get, trying to pick up the smooth technique for exiting the boat, entering mm -hmm. the boat, exiting yeah. the boat, entering the boat is gonna be, That's definitely be a challenge. Yeah. So I feel like we've, gotten a little better since we started. We've been un under some pretty good tutelage from uh, uh, Mike Thornton and Shireen, mm -hmm. you know, the best. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah.
The sun is setting and the light is too poor for filming and we haven't even reached Newbury. The crews have a long night ahead. See you at Westminster. As the River Kennet periodically joins the canal, crews benefit from stretches of flow. Portages become less frequent and the temperature drops. Through the Berkshire villages of Thatcham, Woolhampton and Aldermaston. Paddling through Reading Town Centre, silently passing the Saturday Night Revellers and onwards towards the Thames. Many crews will do a complete kit change and enjoy some proper food before paddling into the darkness through Sonning, Ship Lake and the Long Portage of Marsh. Down the Henley Strait towards Forley Temple, the Hervey. Temple Marlow. It's like meeting old friends and hopefully support teams. Cookham is up next. Very dark, but a good place for a wee. Wave to the King as you pass Windsor Castle. Hop across the across the Lock Island at Chertsey. It's starting to get light for the five mile slog past Royal Canoe Club to make the tide window at Tennington. The river widens and boat traffic starts to increase, causing some challenging wash and refracted waves from the vertical bank sides. There are some impressive bridges and other sites, but who cares, just get me to the finish. Support teams are watching the little dots on the real-time tracking map, willing the crews towards the finish. And there it is, the Palace of Westminster, Westminster Bridge and the end. The scenes and emotion at the finish need no words from me.